Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards, and we're finally taking a look at the Fecker Galaxy 80. Um, a lot of people have asked me to take a look at this keyboard. Um, it's kind of been a decision between where to source it from because of a certain company's name that's on the box that I'd rather not deal with, but I've really been happy with Fecker products over the years. So I actually reached out to WhatGeek and they were kind enough to honor my request to review this. So I'm reviewing this on their behalf, but also to take a look at it for all the people that have asked me, what are my thoughts on this keyboard? And I can't give thoughts on it until I actually have it. So uh, Fecker first really, I guess, known for the IK75, a very popular 75%. Uh, that came out and I mean to this day I think it's still popular there's the QMK Via edition now that's floating around I've seen it as low as like I want to say $49.95 but um, I use their numpad the Fecker JJK21 uh, I have a Fecker IK65 the IK85 um, the Fecker Alice so I have quite a few Fecker models and I've been fairly happy with them especially the Via um, QMK editions. I do not believe this one has QMK or VIA, but I guess we'll find out once we get into it. Um, this is an aluminum TKL uh, that has, I believe it is three mode, if I'm not mistaken, and it has that little pocket as on the GMK81 or 67S that has a little pocket right there for putting the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Um, I don't know what color this is in. They chose it for me, but I'm always glad um, to work with WhatGeek. They've always been very affable. And um, from everybody that I have talked to that has purchased from WhatGeek, they're happy. Um, we haven't had any complaints uh, of any issues. They ship quick. They have a lot of things that are available on AliExpress but they're gonna ship a little bit quicker and they're going to be more responsive than say if there's an issue with AliExpress. So you might pay a few, a few dollars more on WhatGeek, but you're gonna have more peace of mind. Anyway, let's go ahead and open up this keyboard because I've been waiting to get into it. I've been under the weather for a few days. That's why I haven't had any new videos. I do apologize. Um, I do have a all the stuff to update my studio. I just have to get around to doing it. I'm just trying to get feeling up to 100% so that I can get to it because I do have quite a few pre-ins. I wanted to get this all done um, before I hit 5,000 subscribers, which has been a couple of weeks now or a week. And um, I just, I was basically in bed for most of the week or a little over a week. So I do apologize for that, but let's go ahead and dive on in and see what we've got with the Fecker Galaxy 80. All right, so before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we got in the box. We've got a nice little manual. It looks like it comes in English and Chinese. That'll give us the, uh, the different functionalities, how sleep works, the lightning effects, and the mode connections. We'll probably look at this in a little bit. We do have a box here. Let's see what's inside the box. So in the box, it does look like we have a couple of extra switches. I'm always glad when manufacturers include extra switches because you never know when you might need to replace one and this is a fecker branded linear switch it's a light white with a long pull i would guess maybe 35 to 40 grams and definitely a long pull and no ping whatsoever so it's very likely lube so that's a nice Fecker switch. I've always liked Fecker switches as well. Uh, the Fecker Holy Panda is one of my favorite of the variants of Holy Panda. Honestly, I, I like the Fecker Holy Panda better than the Drop X Holy Panda or the Drop Holy Panda. We also have a rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable. And we have a standard wired keycap and key switch puller. And here we are with the Fecker Galaxy 80. It comes with a nice dust cover, which I always appreciate. Keyboards get too dirty, too easy, too quick. So there actually seems to be a piece of tape above here, which I find kind of interesting. I guess they just don't want this shifting during shipping. 
So let's go ahead and take this off. Yep, I was right. That's where they're hiding the USB dongle. So there, it is a magnetic piece. This is made out of aluminum. And this pops right out. And thankfully, it has the Fecker logo on it. So you're going to know. I mean, even if you have a few Feckers, it ain't going to take long to figure out which one it, it, this uh, dongle goes to. Uh, kind of just ejects. I think it's because of the... Um, I don't think it's a spring. No, there's no spring. I want to say it's the magnets. Let me just put that there and slide it over. And there we go. So it looks like we have a fully loaded keyboard. I want to say these look like an SA type profile keycap. And from the feel of them, they feel like PBT. Let's see what we've got here. They are a double shot keycap. Um, maybe they're MOA. I got to look that up because they are a little bit lower profile. But I think they may be in the SA family. So taking a quick look at these keycaps, let's see what kind of width we have for these double shot keycaps. Whoa, 1.7 millimeters. I think that's the highest I've seen. Uh, I think there's another keyboard I saw that had 1.7 millimeter keycaps. Though it could have just been a keycap sound that I got. I think this is only the second time that I've seen 1.7 millimeter keycaps. That is a nice, nice and thick. Oh, let's see what, oh. That's definitely marbly. I like that sound. That That is very pleasing. All right, let's see what we have for stabilizers here. Oh. Looks like we have some plate mounted stabilizers on a PC plate. Go ahead and pop this switch out. And we do have plastic PET layer below an IXPE foam layer, and they're both on top of the PCB. Uh, I'm not sure if there's much, but it looks like there's a PET layer below the um, PCB. So these actually, I'm pretty sure, are Fecker um, stabilizers. They look a lot like the Holy Pandas, and I do believe that they're Palm. And I really like these on other keyboards that I've gotten. I haven't really had to tune them. They're nicely lubricated, so they're pretty much just ready to go. And taking a look on the actual PCB, I don't think there is support for screwing stabilizers, but I kind of felt like there was a spot that the switch wanted to go under there. Now, it's going through to the other side. So yeah, so all we have options for are for the uh, plate mounted stabilizers. We do have south facing three and five pin hot swappable. Put these back in. These stabilizers are well attached. The tolerances are very good. They are well attached to the plate. So it's always nice when you don't have the option for uh, screw on stabilizers that you do have nice stabilizers that grab onto the plate just fine. Looking at the back, we have a center aligned USB-C port. We have an on and off switch, and we have a Windows and a Mac switch. We do not have any adjustable feet, but that's usually the case with a aluminum keyboard. And we have a pretty nice sticker back here. We've got four longer rubber feet, and it looks like we actually have plugs right here underneath where the screws are at. So that's kind of odd. We're not going to open it up and get into it today, but we will at some other point to see what kind of modding we can do into it and what it looks like on the inside. But for now, I'm just going to cover that back up. All right. Now, it's very balanced weight for being an aluminum keyboard. It's not light, mind you, but it's not like, oh, I'm going to need a... Uh, some extra strong arms to carry this around. This is, this is probably at the weight limit of thrown in your backpack, but then again, it's aluminum finish. You have anything else metal in there, it could um, mess with the finish. So I would, if you're gonna carry on your backpack, I would find some sort of like 
a sash or a bag that you can protect the inside of. So, you know, a metal pen or something won't scratch the finish of this, which is actually really, really nice. This appears to be an off-white, not quite the off-white, off-white. I mean, it's almost there. This is an off-white milky beige, I think it's called. And they're very similar, though this, I would call it, tone or two lighter. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in and see what the lights on this thing look like. All right, so we have this, uh, this, uh, I don't know, you want to call it like a rainbow LED diffuser. It's been, um, seen it on quite a few TKLs as of late. It's a bit of a highlight. Um, I don't dislike it. I like that and I like side lights, but this one, the RGB came on pretty quick because they're pretty bright. And they're definitely getting diffused some by that PC plate. It would have been nice to see some of those LED diffusers inside the switch, but I don't think I've seen any Fecker switches with those. For a lot of people, this is going to be more than sufficient. Um, I've seen this keyboard priced. Two years ago, this keyboard would have been over $300. 280 320 and above the fact that it's under a hundred dollars is just insane to me um i was speaking to a friend of mine who's been in the industry longer than i have and um he sent me a link to a couple of keyboards he thought were cheap he's like man this is cheap and i sent him a link to um the keychron c3 pro now that they have the rgb and hot swap version and it's like 39.99 i believe plus it's got a coupon brings it down to like 31 or 29 something like that and he's like what <laughs> he's um on one side of the industry doesn't mess with keyboards all that often he messes more with the switches so he was kind of surprised he was like what and i was like yeah it's a it's it's amazing what you can get in the market he's like last time i was looking at a keyboard was Probably, and he thought it was a few months ago, and it turned out it was a little longer than that. So he was surprised at the price jumps that he saw with these keyboards. Okay, so it does have an indicator with the lights when you switch between Windows mode and between Mac mode. It'll flash green for Mac mode and it'll flash blue for Windows mode. I don't know why green, green Apple maybe? <laughs> if you want it on wireless mode, you got to turn the on switch to on. It is. It does have a cap lock indicator. You can actually see. Um, I really wish they would bring Windows and step caps lock back um, and make them more. I don't know. They should just be more, even if it's just a windowed regular caps lock key so that you can actually see that white shining through there as opposed to the color of the rest of the keyboard. So you can actually just see, oh, caps lock is on. But actually, I have a couple of um, windowed caps lock keys. I don't know if I have one that matches this profile, though. So the windows key also shows a white light as does the caps lock when it's locked. And then just do that to unlock it. All right, the red light is constantly on under the FN indicator when it's charging, when it's full, it'll be a green light. And when it's flashing red real fast means that the battery is low. The F13 can drive user-defined function, so. All right, so function enter cycles us through the different light effects. Function enter it for the rest of the backlights, but I'm trying to find how to get the colors. There's a single color, so if I want to change, oh, it's function backspace. All right. So yeah, we can cycle through the single colors, find the color that we like. Uh, let's see if we got white over here. Oh, it's not quite. We have red. There we go. Everything's the same. So we have pretty easy functioning um, light controls. And it sounds just lovely out of the box. Like I said, for a lot of people, I think this is going to be 
more than sufficient for them. You know, there's not going to be any need to mod. There's good switches already. So sometimes he gets jealous when I'm playing with keyboards and not playing with them. This is Velcro. He's our big baby. I know he looks like he's still a kitten, but he's like 12. But he still acts like a kitten. But he's our, he's our boy. He's our boy. Aren't you Velcro? You're like looking around to see with everything you can mess around with. Hmm? Sorry, I had to pay the cat tax. So like I said, I've had a lot of communications regarding this keyboard. Either somebody bought it and they're like, dude, you got to check it out. Or, hey, I'm interested in buying it, but I want to get your opinion on it first. So um, I, I have to agree with the, the first group of people that said, hey, man, you got to check this out because it's a nice keyboard for the price or the features. It's <sighs> it used to be when I first started this, I'd review like five, six keyboards. And out of those, there was one that kind of stood out, maybe not that much, but it stood out above the rest. And the rest were just like, meh. Nowadays, the majority of the keyboards I review, I'm like, that's pretty good. It's rare that I come across something that I'm just like, what are they thinking? And it's primarily with keyboards that appear to be made for the market as it was two, three, four years ago. Um, whereas the keyboards that are tuned to the current market for mechanical keyboards are releasing some amazing kits. Um, like I said, I've had a fondness for Fecker keyboards and switches now for several years since I got a hold of the IK75. Um, that's one of the first, I'd say, 10 keyboards that I really got in there and modded you know, the heck out of it. Um, got different plates for it, um, did some stuff with the firmware, uh, able to convert a non Fecker via into a Fecker via keyboard, um, because it was using the same, everything It was just using different firmware. So I was able to flash that. That wasn't as easy of a process. And I started making a video, but then I lost half of it because a hard drive going bad. So that's why you won't be able to find that video. Um, Maybe one of these days, if the Fecker keeps selling, I'll, I'll do it over again with the new Fecker. But this Fecker Galaxy 80 is, for one, it's a TKL, which is basically my favorite layout. For two, it's an F13 TKL, which is even better for me because I know I've got the full one and a quarter uh, size keycaps for the modifiers on both sides. And I've got the F13 that I can map to several different functions. Um, and I mean, not for nothing, I like this uh, this colorway. I love when the legends are large, when they're little and tiny up in the corner. I'm like, what are you guys scared of? You've got so much more keycap space. Spread out, spread your wings, enjoy. So I love the, um, the legends. I love the feel of the keycaps. Um, and I just, I love how it sounds. I mean, this, this keyboard is, is. Yeah, this is nice. I think um, this is gonna dethrone my current daily driver that I've been using for a few days. Um, well, not using that much because I've primarily been in bed, but when I did get up, um, and um, I think I'm gonna think I'm gonna enjoy it. Uh, I've got to say, this is for what it is for an aluminum TKL. It's probably, I mean, it's cheaper than a Q3, and the Q3 doesn't even sound this good out of the box. Don't get me wrong, I love the Q3 and I love having a knob. And it would be cool. I I could take the F13 or I could take the knob. I would probably rather a knob over here, but that's neither here nor there. This is by far a just a much better key, keyboard than the Keychron. And don't get me wrong, Keychron is a good keyboard. The Keychron, I constantly recommend, uh, especially the new V3 Max series, the C3 Pro. Um, and if they're wanting to go aluminum, 
I mean, the Q series are good keyboards. They just require some work to get even close to sounding like this. They never, never have I pulled out a key cron out of a box and it sounds this good. And this is cheaper than the Q3, which is the TKL version of the, um, of the key cron. And th then there's the Q3 Pro. Yeah, they do Max and they do Pro Pro. The Q3 Pro, which is wireless, I believe that one's 219 or 229 with keycap. So you could buy two of these for what you could buy a wireless, one wireless TKL key crown. So just something to keep in mind. Um, only thing I would say is do not, whatever you do, do not purchase from Epo Maker. Um, this is available from Wet Geek and I would recommend going with them. You're going to be in a much, much more, you're, you're gonna be dealt with by an actual valid vendor as opposed to a company that apparently part of its business model is to just ignore support requests, send out wrong items, a number of things. I'm not gonna make this a, a hate Epo maker video, but if you want to get this keyboard, I recommend getting it from what you get just the specs today we're taking a look at the fecker galaxy 80 an 88 key three mode aluminum tkl with an f13 it is a gasket mounted pc plate and a powder coated aluminum alloy body it has a three and five pin hot swap south facing pcb with both pet and ixpe foam layers it comes preloaded with Fecker white marble linear switches and MDA PBT double shot keycaps. It has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing it at 1,720 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters while the back sits at 36 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of eight degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $59.99 as a bare bone base and $99.99 for a complete pre-built unit. Links to what geek for this keyboard are below. All right, so I took a quick look at the software. It's um, one of the better closed source software that's out there, uh, though the screen for um, changing the lights for below the navigation cluster don't seem to do anything, only the ones for the backlight. And when I pressed the home key, it took me to a site called VTER, which has an Epo maker, or it has a, which has two keyboards listed, a Galaxy 80 and a Galaxy 80 Pro, and they both have a link to a VIA firmware, though the single mode downloads the three mode goes to a broken link i was hoping hey because i have heard rumbles that this is a bio compatible keyboard it comes with closed source firmware but apparently there is firmware that you can flash and have via functionality so um because i was able to find the json file i was able to find everything but the link to the flash the firmware um was a broken link. So I'm going to look into that more when I come back to this keyboard at some point, or if I find that information before I get a chance to do the video of opening it up, I will put a link and update it and pin it in the description down below. I mean, this keyboard for it to be $59.99 bare bone. I mean, if for some reason, you know, you want your own switches and you've already got a set of keycaps in mind, I you can't beat that, but at $99 fully loaded with some very nice 1.7 millimeter thick double shot PBT keycaps in the MDA profile, as well as the the Fecker marble white um, switches, which are quite nice. Um, I just they're both really good deals in my opinion. Um, and what Geek actually has it listed for cheaper than another site. So, like I said, fact, um, what Geek is it's real quick at shipping. They have awesome support, and I would trust them over most of the stores on AliExpress and some other vendors. I really am liking this keyboard. I can definitely say that I would recommend this for somebody that's been in the hobby for a while or someone just jumping in because 
I think for the most part, the majority of people are going to take this out, like how it sounds, like how it feels, and be happy with it. Um, obviously, you know, if you want to add a numpad here, in case you do use a number pad like I do, um, I think that the angle of it is going to match a lot of different ones that are out there. So I myself find this to be an extremely good value uh, and a well-built keyboard. I can't wait to get in there and see all the different layers that it has um, and see if there's, you know, any way. I'm, I'm sure that I could tweak the um, sound profile and make it a little bit deeper, though I think it's pretty deep to begin with. It's got that marbly kind of glass, glassy sound, but it does have it on the deeper end. So it really is a nice combination. And I want to try the this with some tactile switches, some heavy tactiles, like some U4Ts. Um, but I've got to say, personally, I like this keyboard. And as soon as I'm done with this video, it is going on my desk to be my daily driver. And I will be coming back to it here in the near future. If you guys have any questions, any comments, any suggestions for anything you'd like to see me do, um, or check out or modify when I do get in there. When I come back to it, please drop them down in the comment section below. I do my best to answer all comments and questions as soon as possible. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test. And as always, fellow humans, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.